Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hello, I'm just uh, prompting my darling daughter to listen for the dogs should she need to. Um, since we're getting started here in Psalm 66, and it's the 20th, the 20th of February. My goodness. Pepper, come here, honey. Tomorrow's the 21st Sunday. We won't be on here, but I want to give a shout out to my sister who's on here every morning with us. It will be her birthday. Happy birthday, Gail. Um, happy birthday. And um, we just want to, you know, wish you the best year, Gail, ever. We want you to have so much joy this year. And uh, we trust that the Lord will bless you. And I have to let the dogs out. One moment, they're not going to let up. All righty. So, yes. So happy birthday. Good morning, Caitlin. <laughs> okay. Psalm 66 is one of the first psalms in a long, long time that doesn't say a psalm of David. So I don't know whose psalm it is, but uh, it's not inscribed by David. Maybe your translation say more. We're in the Passion Translation. <clears throat> it says, for the pure and shining one, a song of awakening. Let's read this. Everyone everywhere, lift up your joyful shout to God. Sing your songs tuned to his glory and tell the world how wonderful he is. For he's the awe-inspiring God, great and glorious in power. We've never seen anything like him. That's an understatement. Mighty in miracles, you cause your enemies to tremble and no wonder they all surrender and bow before you. All the earth will bow down to worship. All the earth will sing your glories forever. <clears throat> Pause in his presence. Hi Snoopy. Everyone will say come and see the incredible things God has done. It'll take your breath away. He multiplies miracles for his people. He made a highway going right through the Red Sea. As the Hebrews passed through on dry ground, <clears throat> exploding with joyous excitement over the miracles of God. In his great and mighty power, he rules forever, watching over every movement of every nation. So beware rebel lands. He knows how to humble you. Praise God, all you peoples. Praise him everywhere and let everyone know you love him. There's no doubt about it. God holds our lives safely in his hands. He's the one who keeps us faithfully following him. That really struck me. That it's always his grace that keeps us on the road to following after him. <clears throat> oh, Lord, you, we have passed through your fire like precious metal made pure. You've proved us perfected us and made us holy. You've captured us, ensnared us in your net, and then like prisoners, you placed chains around our necks. Wow, that's really harsh. Um, you've allowed our enemies to prevail against us. We've passed through fire and flood. Yet in the end, you always bring us out better than we were before, saturated with your goodness. I come before your presence with my sacrifice. I'll give you all that I've promised, everything I have. When I was overcome in my anguish, I promised to give you my sacrifice. Here it is, 
All that I said I would offer you is yours, the best I have to bring. I'll throw it all in the fire as the fragrance of my sacrifice ascends unto you. Pause in his presence. All you lovers of God who want to please him, come and listen and I'll tell you what he did for me. I cried aloud to him with all my heart and he answered me. <clears throat> Now my mouth overflows with the highest praise. Yet if I had closed my eyes to my sin, the Lord God would have closed his ears to my prayer. But praises rise to God, for he paid attention to my prayer and answered my cry to him. I will forever praise this God who did not close his heart when I prayed and never said no when I asked him for help. He never once refused to show me his tender love. Wow. There's a lot of principles in here <clears throat> that I was taking note of. Uh, before I forget and go back through this with just a few notes, I wanted to take note of. Um, I was on the phone yesterday with a friend who lives now in Colorado and um, she's in a ministry school there. And um, she had been on my timeline and she saw the post that I had of the interview of Corey Tinboom, who the movie and the book, um, Hide, The Hiding Place is written about her life story. And she told me, that um, she just wept through it. And really, um, I didn't weep through it, but I, I was just um, brought back, you know, some 40 or 45 years probably when I first knew about Corey Ten Boom. <clears throat> and she really marked my life, really impacted me so strongly. And um, I felt like I was 15 again or 12 or whatever it was reading The Hiding Place or watching the movie when it first came out. That was a real milestone for Christian media. And um, I just cannot emphasize enough that if you have never read the book or watched the movie, it's just a must. And um, if you want to go on my timeline and look at the interview, Catherine Coleman is interviewing her actually. Excuse me. I don't think they could have more different personalities, the two women, but both of them have experienced, excuse me, the miraculous of God. And that's what this chapter 66 is about, the miracles that God demonstrated. And they both <clears throat> uh, dearly love the Lord because of what he's done in their lives. And so all that to say, at least watch the interview if you have an hour <clears throat> sometime this weekend or um, yeah, take the time to look up the, the um, <clears throat> story on Netflix or YouTube or something. I'm not sure where we'll find it. But anyway, um, Psalm 66, I just... Um, well, I will, I underlined a lot of it, but I'll just uh, bring one point out, and that is in um, verse 12. And verse 11, where it says you've placed chains around our necks. <laughs> it means that he's attached suffering to our hips in the literal translation. <clears throat> and so... <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know why I've got <clears throat> something in my throat. I had a smoothie. <clears throat> I think it's a little stuck. But anyway, um, you have allowed our enemies to prevail against us. There are some things that happen in our lives to sharpen us, to mold us, to shape us. And then, um, and God allows it. He allows it. And um, we need to come to grips with that. And, um, 
in the end, we can always know that he will bring us to a better place than we were before. That's what I was seeing there in verse 12. And the literal translation says he brings us into a wide open space. And so I'm believing for that wide open space to be brought through <clears throat> into that place that he has for me and that he has for you. Another thing that caught my eye was just um, this principle of closed eyes bringing a closed ear. So when we close our eyes to, this is in verse um, 18, when we close our eyes to our sin and don't confess them and just ignore them, <clears throat> um, it, it can cut us off from being able to be heard by the Lord. So closed eye from us brings about a closed ear from him. <clears throat> so we want our, our prayers answered. These are principles that are like <laughs> grown-up principles. We need to really um, embrace them and not forget that um, sin or stuff that's grieving to the Holy Spirit, whatever that might be, <clears throat> unconfessed or ignored um, can really mess up our prayer life or the answers that we're waiting to receive from the Lord. So, um, but we can always know and be reassured that in verse 20, he says, he never will close his heart off to us. There may be closed ears, but his heart never will be closed. He'll never refuse, never refuse his tender love towards us and those are things that we know to be true about him um i was thinking over in verse seven that he watches the movement of every nation and i just somehow this week um when i was reading through some comments online <laughs> i got onto a page of people that i know in, in holland and um haven't seen him in years, but um, it took me to other comments from uh, their Dutch friends, and they were really anti um, or kind of mocking the United States. I'll say it that way. I don't know these friends of these people. I don't know any of them. I don't know their situations. I don't know if they even know the Lord, but um, I just thought, you know, um, he's watching over every movement of every nation. It says here, and I was talking to the Lord about it while I was looking at it. And afterwards I was grieved. And I thought it was not very often that I saw the mockery of a whole nation or a whole political system or a whole, I know that it's not uncommon, but it just had freshly presented itself to me. And um, I just thought this morning when I was reading this, that um, the Lord sees, he says, the rebel lands. And, he, and I made a note that he sees the hardness of heart. <laughs> it's like a, a film has come over people's hearts and it's riddled with judgment. And um, and it's not all their fault. It's so much the media's fault. The media is going to have a lot to um, make amends for before God, especially the media moguls and the people who are driving the media. I just feel like so many people in the world are getting false information. Then they get <clears throat> false um then the false accusations start. And um, I remember uh, six months or so ago when the weather was so bad, maybe it was a year ago. Gail, I don't know if you remember, but I said that the Lord showed me that the fire, oh, it was more than, it was a long time ago because it was during the fires. And the Lord showed me when I was praying that the fires were being perpetuated by the slander in the air and the atmosphere. And so I was thinking today um, how all over the world, unrepented sin and slander and 
uh, the things that go out of our mouth that are out of our tongue that either can lead to life or to death keep the atmosphere in an uproar so to speak and the um, the elements are in chaos meaning the weather is what I'm getting to um, we can look at it in all sorts of ways as to you know um, scientifically why there's so much tornadoes or fires or snow or whatever but <clears throat> I think unrepented sin and specifically um, this uh, slander or this uh, mockery uh, all of it rooted in pride <clears throat> I mean I sit here and I think of a nation I'll just think of a, a nation I don't have anything in my mind about a particular nation right now <laughs> Uh, except for little bits and pieces of what I hear or see in the news. But let's just think of, um, I don't know. Um, I don't even know what continent to think of. Uh, Rwanda, R-W-A-N-D-A. -R Why can't I say it now that I've thought of this? Okay, this African nation. I know their history. Um, but the first thing in my heart doesn't come up to judge them or to mock them. The first thing that comes up into my heart is to have compassion for them. And so um, we have really, as a people, as humanity, gotten so angsty and so, um, not angsty, but just um, um, cruel. And our thoughts our, our motives, our intentions, our mouths that speak out against one another is just wrong. It's sin. And so I think it's driving the elements <clears throat> in the atmosphere. They can't be comfortable. The atmosphere isn't comfortable in the lack of peace that's coming out of people's mouths. So... Yeah, take this for whatever it's worth, wherever you live. I know we have people that come on with us in the mornings from the United Kingdom. I don't know what uh, you would, you would know better what's going on in your own country as far as this, but we as Americans, <clears throat> and I didn't really know I was going to talk about this and we are going to pray in a second, but we as Americans need to take it upon ourselves too. Um, curb our tongue within our own country and talking about our own people and then certainly about other countries and all of this I'm saying all of it because of one because of the revelation that I had when the fires were going and what was perpetuating them and two because of just reading through this thread that broke my heart knowing that and i wanted to respond to each person and say you don't know us you don't know what you're talking about you don't understand who we are or i wanted to say forgive us if we've portrayed something through our media that's not true forgive us for not having our media better under control and um, okay, so that's enough about that. Let me see if there's anything else <laughs> here. All right, we're going to pray. And I feel like a soberness this morning. As I'm praying, I think that's kind of the tone that I'm conveying. I just feel like God is in many ways trying to grow us up. And uh, let's grow up <laughs> in him, right? So, Father, we come to you today. <clears throat> and we implore everyone everywhere to lift up their joyful shouts to you. 
we sing our songs tuned into your glory. <clears throat> and we want to tell the world how wonderful you are. We just want to shout out. We just pray, Father, that this little video could be shared to the nations somehow, that you would draw us together as brothers and sisters, whatever continent we're on, whatever country we're in, city, um, we're all a part of this planet Earth. And um, I pray, Father, that we would all be able to tell each other how wonderful you are and how you are so awe-inspiring, God, and how great you are in power. And we have never seen anything the likes of you, God. We know we've barely touched the hem of your garment. And yet, even with that one touch, Lord, we are forever changed and healed and made whole. And so, Lord, we just say that you are mighty in miracles and all of your enemies tremble. No wonder they are all surrendered and bowed down before you. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the King, that he is the Lord. And so as we all bow down in the earth and worship you, and sing your praises, we say to one another, we choose with our words to change what comes out of our mouth, and instead we say, come and see the incredible things that God has done. It will literally take your breath away. He multiplies miracles for his people. Lord, we thank you for the multiplied miracles all over the world how you make highways that go right through the Red Sea. Whoever is in a Red Sea right now, Lord, we call forth their highway that they need, that they may pass through on dry ground as the Hebrews did, and that at the end of their journey, they will explode with glorious joy, joyous excitement <clears throat> because of the miraculous power of God. We thank you, Lord, in your great and mighty power <clears throat> that you rule forever, that you watch over every movement of every nation, and you see the hardness of heart, you see the rebellion, you know, and you know what it will take to humble each man and each woman. God, you are you are in control. And so we praise you this morning, we praise you, all the people praise you, everywhere, everyone, letting, letting you know how much we love you. There is no doubt in our mind that you are safely holding our lives in your hands, that you are keeping us faithfully following after you, that you are the one that keeps us in your care. And we have passed through the fire and as precious metal, we have been purified, Lord. You've proved us and perfected us and made us holy. You've captured us. You've ensnared us like a bird in a net and you, like a prisoner, have placed chains around us, around our necks, allowing our enemies to prevail against us. We've passed through the fire and we've passed through the flood, but what we know that is that in the end, you will always bring out, bring us out better than we were before. You'll always make us better through this process, and you will always give us a wide open space in the end to inhabit. So we come and thank you, Lord, 
that through the fire and through this testing time, we look ahead to the wide open spaces that you're bringing us to live in that will be saturated with your goodness and will be truly places for us to rest. We just call those places forth for each person that's on this um, devotion today. We thank you, Lord, that you have a saturated land, saturated with your goodness. And today, Lord, we bring our sacrifices to you. We bring everything that we have, all that we've promised, everything we have, even as we've been overcome in anguish, we've promised you to give you everything. So we offer everything to you today, Lord. It is all yours, the best that we have. We throw it into the fire and that the fragrance of it will be a sweet smelling aroma to you. You can have it all, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that as we seek to please you, we who are lovers of God, we come and we listen to each other's stories. We listen to the testimonies of our brothers and sisters that they might become prophetic utterances for our lives as well. And we cry aloud to you with all of our hearts as our brothers and sisters do all over the world, knowing that you answer us. And Lord, we, we choose today not to turn our eyes away from our sin, but to confess our sin to you, not to close our eyes, but to just bring it to you and be cleansed of it and just um, know that your ears will stay open to us and that our prayers will remain unhindered. <clears throat> We overflow in our hearts and in our mouths with the highest praise. We bring you the highest praise as we confess our sins. You deserve it all. Let our praises rise to you, God. And may you pay attention to everything that concerns us. And may you answer our cries. We forever praise you, Lord, because you've never closed your heart to us. And you've never said no when we've asked you for help. You've never closed your heart. You've never once refused to show us your tender love. You've never refused us. You'll never refuse us, Lord. You'll never close your heart to us, Lord. And so we thank you today on this 20th day of 2021 that your heart remains open to us, that you, you are always listening to us. May we just listen to you as well. We thank you, God, that you love the whole world and you have the whole world in your hands. And we just place blankets of um, non-judgment <laughs> over each of the five continents. We just open up <clears throat> the portals in the in the continents, in the countries of this world to hear you, God. And we pray and we ask, Lord, that the mouths that you've given us as human beings would speak good and not evil, would speak praise, would speak life and not death. Use us for your glory to change the atmosphere. Come, change our hearts, 
change everything inside of us that wants to speak out or just post things that are not lifting people up. Rid us of those posts even that bring judgment on people. And Lord, we just thank you for the humility that you walked in, Jesus. We want, <laughs> just had the funny thought, would Jesus, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus post this? <laughs> we sit with you at our computers. Will we be the be part of the ongoing atmospheric chaos? Forgive me, Lord, for the times that I've commented in such anger and confusion and hurt. Lord, rid us of this ploy of the enemy to keep us divided, to keep us from hearing each other, keep us from listening to people who have need of you. In Jesus' name, amen. to share something with you that I just was reminded of that there's been many times that I've seen people's posts and they were really upset about something. And I, I don't even know these people, but I'll go and private message them and say, if you ever want a real person to listen to you, I'm here. Um, but I'm not going to get in, into the bashing on the feed that's happening. I, sometimes I feel like when I do type my two cents, I feel the Holy Spirit inside me grieved as I hit enter. And I know he's just going, nope, missed it. Sometimes I erase it. <laughs> Lots of times I erase it. <laughs> but sometimes I leave it. And um, anyway, that's my tangent for today. I don't know even how this all started, but God bless you and happy birthday, Gail. And uh, we'll see you on Monday. All right, everyone, have a wonderful Saturday. It's very pretty here. I'm so grateful we have good weather. Um, I made my sister a cake. I'm not sure if it turned out okay. I'm a little concerned. Excuse me. And um, I think if she wants to, we're going to go aqua golfing, but I'm not sure if that's what she wants to do. But in case you're curious about what that is, <laughs> there's a driving range here that goes into the river. And so you just hit a bucket of balls into the river and they have little things you can aim for, um, 200 yards or whatever it says. Um, so we might do that because we have to take advantage of nice weather because it's been super cold and cloudy and rainy. And now it's, I think we're free of it now for at least 10 days. Tomorrow is also my daughter's birthday, her real birthday, 16. Um, and then my other oldest daughter is turning 18 a few days later. So I'll be back on with you during that time. So I'll still be, <clears throat> I don't think I'm baking her a cake. I think she wants a store-bought cake. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. I'll, I'll see you Monday. Bye.